the relevance of shareholder oppression suits certainly in my practice has increased quite significantly over the last several years. I think people are just more cognizant of them and they may just seem to arise much more in practice, particularly from the litigious side of things. But also, of course, um, even if it doesn't get to that point, people approaching for advice in relation to what to do uh, before they in fact even do it. Of course, we'll be dealing with the legislation, which is at the core of all of this. It's a statutory jurisdiction. I'll be going through the legal tests and factual considerations affecting the legal issues and focusing on the most directly relevant statutory provisions and the case law that has flowed from that, particularly looking at the meaning and scope of the legal tests to be applied. And um, in between that, looking at the factual issues that flow with a focus on the practical issues of taking instructions and focusing on the relevant factual issues that will affect the legal test. And of course, that's equally as applicable to a potential plaintiff action as it is to a defendant uh, looking to defend a claim, whether it be threatened by way of letter of demand or indeed um, by receipt of an originating process. And they proposed to sue on behalf of the company and the other holding companies for the winding up of each of the companies. The grounds for winding up were supposedly that the affairs of each company thought to be wound up were being conducted in a manner that was oppressive or unfairly prejudicial. Now, what they didn't do in that case, which was really quite obvious that they should have, was to bring the relevant evidence regarding the financial position of the relevant individual companies. And it was found that the complaints upon which the application believed to sue were based related to the non-payment of dividends by subsidiaries, but they did not even bring any evidence that any subsidiary had the capacity to pay the dividend, or if they did, to what extent. So here is a summary of the sorts of things that I'd suggest are particularly relevant to taking instructions and giving advice in relation to shareholder oppression suits, be it for plaintiffs or defendants. Um, as I've sought to emphasise, a holistic factual consideration is necessary. That means going into quite some detail. If people want to explore these particular issues, which, which as I've tried to emphasise, can have very, very subtle variations depending on the particular factual circumstances, um, then I'm, I'm more than happy to, to help them over the telephone. I don't, I don't want to keep everyone, but I've thought to be as helpful as I can in the, in the time that I've got. 